Let me tell you about the real rebels. Let me tell you about fear and courage. Let me tell you about Pere Pasic, a Yugoslavian artist. Hello everybody and welcome to the first ever What The Flick TYT Hybrid. <laughs> Cross promo time. It's my it. dream come true. Um, ben Mankiewicz, Rick Strom, uh, TYT in general, very proud to be uh, sponsoring the Kicking and Screening Film Festival. It's a soccer film festival in New York, the 18th through the 21st of June. Uh, Rick, you will be there in I New York there. Uh, covering, yes. the, covering the festival. Uh, hopefully the beginning to of, uh, of fostering a nice relationship of, uh, with us, with TYT Sports and the soccer world. I know that I've been occasionally hostile to the soccer world, but I am... <laughs> open to bringing them into the, the TYT family. That's it's, good. It's great. And, and I'm, what I'm hostile to, just to be f clear, yeah. is an insistence that Americans are going to get beyond, get, are going to endorse soccer here in America. If it happens, great. I've been told that for 35 They're years. They're already endorsing it. I just don't believe it. Okay. I don't believe we have room for more than the sports that we have, but we will see. But the thing about these films is that, you know, I'm a huge baseball fan, as you know, I'm serious, I watched nearly 18 innings of the Yankees and the A's today, is that, you know, I get that the way I feel about baseball, for most of the world, that's how they feel about soccer. Yes. And they're intense about it and passionate about it. And what these movies have done is suggest that that sort of passion and that intensity is more than just a passion and intensity uh, for a desired outcome in a sporting event, but that that kind of passion and intensity can impact change for social justice in the world. Uh, and these three films that we're going to talk about uh, all sort of advocate that idea. Uh, we're going to start uh, uh, with an interesting movie because it's really about, it's sort of five smaller movies uh, put together. Certainly. Uh, tell us about the first movie. Well, uh, it's called Rebels of Football, Ben, and it is uh, narrated by Eric Cantona. Is By the way, we, here in America, we say soccer, but most of the world refers to this game as soccer. <laughs> so, continue. Actually, in the Cahill movie, they call the Australians the soccer root. They call them the soccer Yeah, so right. it's a common name. So, Eric Cantona is narrating the movie. Uh, it is translated throughout because he is from France. I believe he is speaking French. And they show the change that... Uh, key footballers, as they like to put it, have made, you're smirking, I understand why, no, no, no. Uh, throughout the entire movie. So we start with Didier Drogba, who is, of course, from Cote d'Ivoire. Did you like my accent? That right was there? good, actually. Yeah. I would have just flat out gone with the Ivory Coast. Coast. Yeah. 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 So, it, I mean, there, there is war and bloodshed going on, and yet uh, when they qualify for the World Cup, you see him, and he shows this, uh, they air this video. He gets down on his knees, along with uh, other guys that he is supposed to be fighting, that he's supposed to be against, and he literally gets down on their knees, all of them do, and they plead for change. They beg for change. And I thought, at least, Ben, that the drug, the, the Cote d'Ivoire uh, with Didier Drogba was by far the most powerful in my opinion. What I got from, from all of these uh, was that these were times of enormous unrest in, in the countries. And, uh, you know, almost, Didier was almost the least political of all of them, because what he really was saying to both sides of the Civil War was just please, enough, put down your weapons and talk. Mm -hmm. And it didn't happen immediately, but there wasn't a big movement at the time to, to, for a ceasefire, to end the Civil War. And, uh, and obviously a lot of factors ultimately led to the peace in the Ivory Coast, but that was a huge first step. And for all of these guys, it didn't come without risk. You're not dealing with people who you can count on to think, well, Didier Drogba just went out and spoke eloquently about the need for peace, and that doesn't suit my political ends, so you, I'm not going to kill him. I mean, there, 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 was, there yeah. was personal, serious personal risk to, to him and his family for doing that, uh, and you can't get past that, that enormous sort of level of courage, kind of courage that, you know, I'm not sure Did they dig into that enough, though? I mean, did, was, did, did they dig into, like, oh, his family was at risk? That was my that? problem with the film in general. I believe it also, these, these pieces uh, aired on uh, Al Jazeera America, if oh, I'm not, I really? believe, yeah. Um, but cool. I, I thought there wasn't quite enough explanation in this. Like, I think, you know, I'm not an expert on the Civil War and the Ivory Coast. You're not? Yeah, I know. Shocker. Oh, Jesus. But I, I assume you that you, like like me, could have used a little primer on exactly what was happening. Well, I and understood, you know, like, uh, 
you know, I understood that there were but know, no people way that were against each sure, other and uh, they were divided. No, I got, but I, it's I in, it was that. incredibly violent. It was a horrible, horrible civil war, and I think we could have done more to point out the risk that he took. I just thought they could, from a film point of view, I thought we could have spent a little more time sort of building the tension, and that was true for all of them. My favorite uh, piece in of the five in this yeah. uh, was Chile. How come? I just I thought that that did the best job of putting us in a time and place and making us understand exactly what was happening uh, in Chile, the uh, overthrow, the military overthrow of a popularly yes. elected uh, president, uh, not wildly popularly elected. He won a three-way race, Salvador Allende. But again, there was a coup, and a coup that was backed with money from the United States government that we sort of, we paid money to uh, 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 to train and to give weapons to and to get so, and to fire them up and for those guys on the right to to engage in a significant disinformation campaign against Allende to undermine his power all because we feared oh my god what if it turns out that a socialist leads Chile and what will happen next what will happen to Colombia and sure. our big fear there was will Chile become another Cuba uh, it was a crazy fear, an unfounded fear, and we were dead wrong. We made horrible mistakes, and ultimately Salvador Allende uh, he killed himself as they were bombing the palace. Uh, there are some who believe he was assassinated. It's a little unclear at this point, although most evidence seems to indicate that he did, in fact, kill himself, but the end was, was near for yeah. him, and I think he did so rather courageously. But again, it was... Was uh, it the testimonial at the end that really dragged you in when... Well, they, 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 had, they had sort of, you, you had part of Allende's last radio address to the country that he delivered on the day that he killed himself when the government fell. Uh, there was a lot more uh, uh, archival footage from the time used there, mm -hmm. effectively, I thought, in the Chile piece. Um, including, of course, what was the big moment that happened in Chile, and you can see it those of you who you know see Costa Gravis' wonderful film Missing with Jack Lemmon, which is about the, the disappeared in Chile after the coup, but they used the soccer stadium to imprison people. So this sort of hallowed place of sort of where everybody in Chile ca came together uh, to root for their uh, favorite club team or, 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 or the national yeah. team when they played there, and then there's this sort of, they turn it into a, a, a prison. And, uh, uh, and I, I thought I just found that whole thing uh, that made it all a little bit more powerful. Absolutely, and it probably brings back horrible memories for all those people that actually went there. We actually heard some of those memories. I mean, I, I can't imagine you know having that be a camp. And the great and player Cazali, right? Yes. So he uh, uh, Carlos you know, Cazali. Carlos Cazali, excuse me. So Cazali, um, again, at a time when there was real risk in 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 pointing out what side you were on showed great courage and he also expressed to himself to, that I thought very courageously uh, some shame that he participated when they reopened the stadium and they'd gotten the prisoners out and they had a yes. match scheduled with the USSR and the Soviets don't come because these guys had overthrown. And he participated right. in a game he where they played nobody. And he felt like he was sort of sort of participating in this sham for Pinochet. Um, and I liked that he was honest about that, that that brought him shame. Then, of course, in the plebiscite that, that, that threw Pinochet from power, it was a very, very powerful uh, a moment in South American history where you could either vote yes to continue uh, with Pinochet or no. And there were these great uh, ad campaigns uh, run at the time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, very sophisticated public relations, really sort of the first time that we saw uh, modern day public relations uh, in a South American election. We'd already seen them here in the United States. But so you either voted yes or no, and there was a very powerful late night commercial that ran from a woman who'd been clearly uh, uh, assaulted. abducted, assaulted, and she didn't say it, but very clearly sexually assaulted. Um, and then it turns out that that's his mother. And he comes in at the end and said, she's my mother. And it's just... Uh, it hit it, home. It hit home. And so yeah. using that stuff as part of the story, I thought made that a particularly effective story. I thought it was great. Yeah, totally. Uh, and you also brought up, obviously, the democracy where they say, you know, I'm voting no. Again, it's very, very impactful. So um, the, the others with Brazil, with Socrates. Uh, I just, again, those didn't, those felt, those felt a little flatter to me. I, I liked the, uh, um, uh, I thought the Algerian one was the best of, of the others, but uh, there was some degree, and then when we'd come in with Cantona, uh, and he sort of, he would sort of, summer, they linked the pieces together with him, I didn't think that was terribly effective. He's clearly a okay. guy who, he has a clear, very 
significant and heartfelt passion about social justice, and yes. I'm right there with him. Uh, it felt sort of heavy-handed. Like I, I was. I, there were moments when I was like, "You don't need to say this. Your point. The stories are supposed to deliver this point. You can't." He was overly intense and righteous. You know, I thought that it was actually what he was doing. Very. Uh, it was it was affectionate and it was passionate with the viewer because he was I felt like his passion for it and the fact that he's putting it out there he's narrating it through he's like you know and then in the end when he collects the jerseys I thought that was pretty impactful actually yeah no, I didn't I, I didn't buy it I wasn't buying it I needed what I needed was some sort of linear connection in the stories I needed more narration in fact in the stories I like documentaries that don't use narration but only when it's done effectively and I thought some narration in the stories where maybe he literally said is that a general thought though on those sorts of movies or is well that no just, when it's you know you, you if you can let the participants tell the story it's effective but it sometimes why some things need narration is because you don't have that and you've got to find a way to get people involved and give them some context and I thought what he gave was a lot of intense staring at the camera uh, and not enough help and uh, and not enough storytelling, which I thought really lacked in, in some of those. Overall, you got all five of these guys, uh, all five of these players from from uh, from Serbia and from Brazil and from Algeria and Chile uh, and the Ivory Coast. Oh, how do you how do you say it? Uh, the Ivory Coast. <laughs> um, <laughs> all of those were uh, all of these guys have great passion. I was like thrilled to learn about these guys. Uh, I would have it would have made more of an impact if I'd had a little greater context. Did you did you feel like you had to do more sort of I research? I did a tremendous amount of research while watching, which was helpful to me. But and Chile is what I knew most about because I've seen uh, I saw a terrific movie at Telluride a couple of years ago about that ad those two rival ad campaigns, which was really a, gotcha. a terrific film. But that said, I, I shouldn't you shouldn't have to watch these things and instantly go on the internet and get some context so you know what's going on. Understood.